You're now tuned in to the Lady Charmaine Live Show, and I'm your host, Lady Charmaine. And as always, I got another great interview for you today. And I'll tell you who it is coming up right after this. My guest today is an actress, comedian, author, broadcaster, podcaster, and television host. And she is here today to talk about her second season of her daily syndicated talk show, Sherry. Help me welcome to the Lady Charmé Live show, Miss Sherry Shepard. Welcome to the show. Hi, good morning. How are you? I am doing wonderful. Glad to have you on the show today. Thank you so much for joining me. Oh, thank you so much for having me on. Appreciate it. <laughs> Good. Well, we're going to be talking about the second season of your brand new show. It's full of life, full of energy. And you also kicked the show off with a bang, bang, letting everybody know that you had a couple of new girlfriends. You lost a few and uh, gained two new ones. So we're going to be talking about that. Why did you choose to open up your show to let everybody know what you did this past summer and the physical changes that you made to your body? Well, I, I think everybody knows me. Mm-hmm. Like anybody who's followed me. My breasts have been my calling card. I learned how to deal with hecklers because they would heckle me about my the size of my breasts. And so they and I get comments all the time of people, why don't you get a breast reduction? They're too big or you know, I love or for men, I love your breasts. It's been you know, that's just who I am. Mm-hmm. Uh one of the things that defined me. It wasn't the only thing, but it was one of the things that defined me. And as I got older, it just started, you know, it was getting painful. Mm -hmm. They were too heavy. I was slouching. I had these grooves in my shoulders from pulling the straps too tight. And I just was tired, you know. I wanted to be able to, like, bend over and tie my shoes and and work out at the gym without them hurting. They were starting to hurt. Mm -hmm. And I just had to say goodbye to my girlfriends. They were my best friends. And I said, it's time to go. So, I did it. I, I, you know, I I got a job. So I was like, I could take this money because the insurance company wouldn't pay for it. Mm -hmm. So I went and did it. And it's the best thing I ever did. I love them. (laughs) I feel lighter. I feel stronger. I can work out. I don't have the grooves. I'm not in pain. I I can sit up straight. It's so many benefits. So they were great for me. And then now it's a new season. <laughs> okay, it's a whole new season. Because also, um, I had read that Queen Latifah had done a couple years ago um, because of the same reason. So you're not even the only one. You have other celebrities that have uh, taken part in that, too. And a lot of other women because of the back pain, the shoulder straps. You know, I'm coming to understand that now. But here's a question that I have for you. Because um, you were losing weight wonderfully. Did you ever lose weight in your girlfriends or did they just stay the same? Well, you know, the thing about it, and I talked to Queen Latifah a lot about the, mm-hmm. the boob job when we did the movie uh, Beauty Shop. We talked extensively about that. And she was, you know, and she went through a, a depression because they took so much. Mm. You know, the thing about when you have big boobs, it covers a multitude of sins. But the one thing that you did share on the show, which I thought was fun, you mentioned that you went from like a 42 double D and, um, and sat, now it look like you're a little C. I'm not sure if it's BC. <laughs> Well, it's, uh, you know, it, I, I if I go to like Sears or Macy's, mm-hmm. I'm a 42, 44 double D. Okay. But if I went to get my brows custom, which I did frequently because it fit me better, I was into the F's, the I's, the G's. I said, what in the world? Right. But uh, <laughs> now I'm like, a, I'm a D cup. I'm a D cup and I'm probably a 38 D. Mm. Um. And I just, I love them. I feel lighter. Mm -hmm. I feel more confident. Um, Like I said, when I talked to Queen Latifah, the thing that happens is when you, you know, get a breast reduction, you, it shows a lot of what big breasts hide. Right. So if I'm, if I'm bloated, because you got that hormone bloat, you gonna see it on the air. You didn't Mm. see it as much when I had big boobs because it covered it up. But now, you know, my boobs are sitting up on top. They're up underneath my chin. So now you can see <laughs> different things. And so I'm like, I'll look at myself and go, ooh, wee. Okay. Right. 
<laughs> but Sherry, you, you look get good. Gym some more. You look really good, and it really does look proportionate. So I wanted to tell you how you look fabulous. Um, what was yeah. your recovery like? Because I'm sure there's a lot of women that look up to you. Because you know we all watch it, watch a show. What was your recovery like? Uh, that probably is the only downside for me. When you're in your 20s and your 30s, you can get a breast reduction and be back at work in two weeks. Right. Um, for me, it took a little bit longer. Mm -hmm. uh, I was out. I was out for it. Now, this is not the norm for everybody. For me, I was out the whole summer that we were on um, on hiatus mm -hmm. for 12 weeks. It is not generally 12 weeks for everybody. But right. for me, it just I healed very, very slowly. And I would have been able to go back to work after like two weeks but it would have been like really very tender mm -hmm. and you know and I do so much physical stuff mm -hmm. so I just opted to do it during my hiatus because I was like I can't go back to work and be trying to double dutch right and my boobs are so tender they were my boobs were big mm -hmm. so it just I had to I just had to treat my body tenderly so I, I, I do realize that a lot of women they're like I can't take off no 12 weeks you can generally go back and you know be cool in about two to three weeks you just got to be careful and you got to be really gentle. Um, even now when people hug me, lady, mm -hmm. see, it still hurts my boobs. Cause it was like, mm -hmm. they brought all of the fat from the bottom up to the top. Mm. So now when people, people get so excited, they hug me and I have to put my arm in front of my breast. Right. Cause they're still really tender. Okay. So you can, I, you know, I think it's about like four weeks of healing. And you just got to be real gentle okay. when you go to work. Well, Sherry, you and I, we have one thing in common. We both had kids at 25 weeks. My daughter would be 24 tomorrow. And oh. So, yeah. So, yeah, she was a preemie. I know the NICU life. She was in there for uh, three months. And I said, oh, I didn't realize okay. her son was 25 weeks as well. And so, yeah, it's, so people do not understand that NICU life and a praying mama. If they understand. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Mm -hmm. How is your daughter? She's she's doing good. She'll be 24 years tomorrow. And then I have a grandson. He's two years old. So, uh, uh -huh. so she's doing good. So, you know, I thank God for the power of prayer. But people don't know when you are in there, anything can happen. You don't know the developmental stages. We have to look out for all of that. So I totally understand when you had your baby. But I didn't realize he was 25 weeks. Um, yeah. Yes. Uh, Jeffrey was. He was 25 weeks and people don't know this, you know, the NICU journey, the mm -hmm. uh, neonatal intensive care unit, it's a roller coaster ride mm -hmm. because he was born at 25 weeks. Mm -hmm. He had three, he had three surgeries. He had uh, stents in his brain. Mm -hmm. He had brain bleeding. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it, it was really hard. I didn't laugh for almost a year. Mm -hmm. I didn't smile. I didn't laugh uh, because it was so much taking care of Jeffrey, not knowing if he was having seizures in his right. brain and being told that he would have, you know, severe mental mm -hmm. issues and cerebral palsy. Mm -hmm. And it was the prayers of my family and my friends. I didn't even have enough strength to pray. Mm -hmm. I just moaned a lot. Right. I was on my knees crying and moaning, trying to pump milk, mm -hmm. uh, you know, to not be able to produce milk for my son. The very thing that he needed to live was such a blow to me as a woman. And um, it was just so much. I was going the guilt mm -hmm. of, you know, was it my fault? I, it just, people don't understand it. But these, these preemie babies, right. they are a strong breed. Right. That is what I will say. <laughs> Absolutely. They <laughs> are. <laughs> you think you know. You have no idea. They told me. Yeah, the doctors told me that my son would never be able to talk. Mm. And I said, but that's not the God I serve. Right. And when my son. Let me tell you, when my son walks up to me, he's like, Mom, will you put that wig back on? <laughs> I know, honey, he was meant to be. You know, and, and yeah. I just feel like, you know, preemie babies have a purpose yes. they, because they fight so hard mm -hmm. to be here. And that's what keeps me going is knowing that my son fought so hard and he's here. And so I fight for him. Well, sure. I got to ask you a question because we know we're going to be talking about the second season of the Sherry show. You know, growing up, yeah. you know, everybody have dreams. Was having a talk show one of your dreams or was it something as you walked your life out from being an actress to comedian that this was one of those surprise blessings or was this a dream of yours? I used to take the toilet paper roll mm -hmm. or the paper towel roll and put it in front of my Barbie dolls and my teddy bears. Okay. And, you know. So it was, I didn't know that that was a dream back then. I couldn't articulate it. Mm -hmm. And I was standing in front of the mirror with my little microphone and talk. 
it's always been a dream of mine. Uh, I did my first pilot for a talk show in 2004 and it didn't work out and I was devastated and I've been in meetings with people. They said, no, I've heard so many no's. It, oh my gosh, I still get emotional. But 18 years later, I get to live out my dream and I'm so just, I, I've been thinking about it for a long time. So I just having to deal with the no's and, mm -hmm. and, and saying, if only I got a chance to show people what I can do and what I can bring. It's so exciting. That's why when people say you have such joy, mm -hmm. because every time I'm behind my door, I pray for the audience who's live, who's, who's sitting in the studio with me. Mm -hmm. And I pray for the audience who's watching me that they would see the joy of God mm -hmm. and the love of God through me and that I would be able to deliver fresh jokes and give joy where there may not be any. Right. And, um, I get very emotional when the door opens up and I come out and I smile because I've been behind the door just thanking God for all of the blessings. Mm -hmm. I don't remember what you asked me. <laughs> That's a, You know what? You better give God praise. Hey, everybody know you come on this show. You can give God praise for what he has done in your life. And it's such a blessing because I understand it. When God blesses you with a gift to be able to talk and to be able to talk to thousands. And he uses you as a mouthpiece because I work in radio. And um, I also am like I'm speaking to a bunch of middle schoolers this afternoon. And when God has blessed yes. you to be able to do that, I am so thankful and grateful. And I tell people, I, I know my girls are going to be listening. I have a Facebook group. I have 13,000 women in my group. When God blesses you with that opportunity, you don't take it for granted. You don't take no, the don't people take that are listening granted. and what you give them. So what you're saying to me is blessing me because I understand what you're saying. I get it. And I also, I, you're right. You don't take it for granted, especially at this age. Mm -hmm. Um, because sometimes, you know, sometimes we get to this age, we get older, people want to discard us mm -hmm. and they feel like, you know, we don't feel seen. Right. And it's one of the reasons, like, I have my funny over 50 where it's like, I told John Murray, who's our executive producer mm -hmm. for Nita Wynn, for Nita, who is our showrunner. I just want to pay homage to women. I want the mm -hmm. women to feel like you are seen. And it's mm -hmm. like, if you, you give your life to everybody, but you always were that one that people in your family or at your job say, you know what? You're funny. You should <laughs> like try that. Right. And those people who know, and, and that's, and it's always been like nagging at you. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, send me a videotape. And if we pick you, it's a nationwide search, funny over 50, then I'm going to put you on my laugh lounge so people can see you. Oh. And I'm also going to take you on the road when Kim Whitley and I do our two funny mamas tour. Wow. We have a NAACP image award winning podcast. And I want to take you on the road to open for us. Mm -hmm. Now Kim don't know that. I didn't tell Kim yet, but she'll be all right. <laughs> okay. But because we're over 50 and it's, and I wanted to, I thought about this a long time. I always said, I wanted to inspire women. Mm -hmm. I wanted to challenge them because life is short. Yes. And sometimes you got to step past. No, all the time. Mm -hmm. You have to step past the fear and just say, I'm going to try it mm -hmm. because the failures are not failures. They push you. Yep. You know, you got to look at them as they, they push you to even move further. And so on my show, like we have a series called best life. And mm -hmm. I said to John Murray and for Nita, I just want women to come on who are successful mm -hmm. to show. I want them to give a blueprint for how they did it. And what were the things that worked for them? And what were the things that I know I'm inspired mm -hmm. by hearing those stories. Mm -hmm. So I knew it would inspire my audience and my audience are women. Like I, I just know, like take a chance, right. take a leap, mm. you know, use the gifts. We don't have just one gift. We have, more, we have so many gifts, yeah. like tap into those gifts mm -hmm. because God created you to change the world. So how are you going to change the world? <laughs> you got to step past the fear to tap into the gift. Girl, you better let God use you today, Miss Sherry. Okay. Girl. <laughs> you better let him I'm use excited. you. I'm like, excited. Look, every morning. I'm excited like this. I'm, I'm excited. <laughs> I know. I, and I pray I, I that my audience it. gets it. You know yeah. what? I get it. I feel it. I know the energy. Um, I'm doing a big women's event next year. I love it. And I'm over 50. So I'm thankful. So when I, I'm receiving everything you're saying, I just want to say thank you for coming on the show. I know you got to go. I want to remind the audience to make sure that you tune in to Sherry weekdays. Check your local listings. If you're here in Sacramento, it's on Fox 40 at 10 a.m. Make sure you watch my sister. And again, thank you so much. And God bless you. And congratulations on season two. You too. And thank you, Lady C, for having me. I appreciate it. Absolutely.